So in this uh, set of videos, we're going to discuss example questions uh, that match the new specification. Now, the new spec, uh, the first set of linear exams was in 2017. And every time a new specification is published or is, is initiated, there's a set of specimen papers. So we're going to go through the specimens for exam one, two and three. That's on the AQA spec. I'm going to start with exam one. So this is the specification paper for exam one. And the first question which this video covers will be about enzymes. So when we approach any question, it's important to be able to highlight some of the key parts of each question. Now you might do that with a highlighter pen and then you can actually annotate some notes around the data or the actual question itself just to help you formulate some ideas about what's being asked for. So if we look at the question at the top, it says a technician investigated the effect of temperature. So you can take a highlighter pen and highlight that on the rate of an enzyme controlled reaction. So we know it's a question about uh, enzyme reaction rate. And we know the independent variable here that the scientist is looking at is the effect of temperature on that enzyme controlled reaction. And then it says at each temperature, the scientist started the reaction using the same concentration of substrate. So we're not, we know that's one of the control values or control variables in this experiment, that the actual concentration of substrate is exactly the same uh, at 37 degrees and then at 60 degrees as well. So if we start to look at the graph itself, uh, the first thing you should really do is look at the, the labels. So if you start with the Y axis and that's the axis going up the left hand side, we can see that represents the concentration of product in grams per decimeter cubed. So that's just grams per liter. So you want to try and use these terms in your answer. And on the X axis, and that's going down the, the bottom of the graph on, along the bottom, it's the time after the start of the reaction in minutes. So what this scientist has done, he might have started with 37 degrees C. So let's just go through some of the details of the experiment. So imagine the scientist had say five different tubes and in those tubes he placed exactly the same volume and concentration of substrate then he would have placed the tubes in a thermostable water bath to equilibrate to 37 degrees c once the uh, the substrate mixture had equilibrated to 37 degrees c the scientist would then have placed the same concentration of enzyme into each of the five tubes now, as soon as that scientist places the enzyme into each of the reaction mixtures, the reaction starts. So actually at time point zero on the left hand side on the X axis, that actually represents no enzyme because actually there's no reaction taking place. So the reaction or sorry, the concentration of product is going to be zero and the reaction rate is zero at time point zero. In the second tube, um, once time point zero has started after 10 minutes what the scientist has done uh, he would have taken a sample of the enzyme mixture and measured the concentration of products at 10 minutes and we can see here on the graph if we just put a little x there 10 minutes at 37 degrees c there's actually eight grams per decimeter cubed so that's the concentration product in that tube after 10 minutes. Now in the next tube, he would have actually stopped the reaction at 20 minutes and then measured the concentration of product. And we can see here, actually, if we put a little cross there to represent the, the data point at 20 minutes at 37 degrees C, there's 12.5 grams uh, per decimeter cubed. Now we've done the same for the other tubes at 30, uh, 30 minutes and then 40 minutes and he's plotted the data on the graph here nice and accurately he's then done a second experiment where he's actually used 60 degrees 60 degrees c this time so we would have done exactly the same experiment with exactly the same control variables so we would have had five tubes each having the same volume and the same concentration of substrate he would have then added the same concentration of enzyme to each of the five tubes and obviously the tubes would have been equilibrated to 60 degrees C prior to adding the enzyme. He's measured the concentration of product after 10 minutes. 
So we can see there 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and 40 minutes, and he's plotted his data. So the first question says, give two other factors the technician would have controlled other than the concentration of substrate, because we're already given that in the question itself. So if we just look at the answers then, we could say the same concentration of enzyme added to each of the reaction mixtures at each temperature, because that must be the same, that's a control variable. The only thing that we're gonna change here is actually the temperature of the enzyme mixture. The second mark, it could have been the same pH of the enzyme substrate mixture, because we wanna keep the pH exactly the same here. To do that, what you could use is a buffer that sets the pH at a particular value, Again, we do not want to change the pH because we know actually pH can affect the activity of an enzyme, so that must be controlled. We could also have the same volume of the enzyme substrate mixture, and that might be 10 milliliters, for example, and that, that gets kept the same. Now, just be aware of one point in the exams. If it's asking for one mark, okay, here, it actually still is asking for two other factors. So you can put down two factors to get that one mark. So question B asks us to do a number of things. First, to draw a tangent on each curve to find the initial rate of reaction. So we're just going to follow what it says and draw a tangent on each curve. And that will allow us to find the initial rate of reaction. Now that just means the reaction rate at the very start of the reaction when the enzyme is added to the substrate at time point zero. Then it tells us to use these values that we've just calculated to find the ratio of the initial reaction rate at 60 degrees versus 37 degrees. And it says show you working. So when we do a ratio, it always has to be to one. So we're gonna find the initial rate of reaction at 60 degrees C and then do a ratio to 37 degrees C. So let's pop the graph on again so we can just see what we're working with. And the first thing we're gonna to do to find the initial rate of reaction at time point zero, just at the point when we add to the enzyme, is draw a straight line, and that's called a tangent. So you draw the straight line, and we'll start with 60 degrees C, from time point zero, and it sits over the top of, or touches the actual curve itself on the graph. But this is a straight line. Now that blue line goes from zero, all the way up to 15 grams per decimeter cubed. And the time point at which 15 grams per decimeter cubed of product has been formed is actually three minutes. So we should be able to see that on here. Now, if you actually draw the next tangent, and this time it's for 37 degrees C, we can actually see that the straight line, the tangent starts at time point zero, the initial reaction rate, and it sits on the curve itself, but it's a straight line. So we can draw it all the way up to 15 grams per decimeter cubed. Now the part of the curve that we're interested in is obviously this bit over on the left-hand side, because that's the initial reaction rate. Now the initial reaction rate will always be the highest reaction rate for each temperature, because actually that's where you have the most substrate, the highest concentration of substrate at time point zero. So when you add your enzyme at time point zero, the reaction starts. And because that's the point at which there's most substrate, we get most product being formed really quickly and rapidly because it's the substrate's allowed to collide successfully with the active sites of the enzymes because there's so much of it present uh, at the very start of the reaction. Now, once we've drawn our tangent and straight line on each of our curves, what we can actually do, let's get rid of that is not only work out how much product or the concentration of product produced per unit time, but we can, we can then convert that unit time into per minute. So we draw a straight line going down and then a straight line going across to the left down to time point zero. So we can see here, hopefully that for 60 degrees C, after three minutes, 15 grams per decimeter cubed of product has been produced. Now, if we do the same for 37 degrees C, 
this time here at the top, we can see 14 minutes produces the same concentration of product, 15 grams per decimeter cubed. So at 37 degrees C, when we've drawn our tangent and our triangle on the graph, 14 minutes, uh, which is obviously a lot longer than three minutes, it takes to produce the same product. Now what we do is use those values and at 60 degrees C, we can write this out and we should do because it does say show you're working. 15 grams per decimeter cubed or per litre of products are produced over three minutes, which actually if we convert that back to per minute is five grams per decimeter cubed per minute. So it's just 15 divided by three, or 15 divided by three minutes gives us five grams per decimeter cubed per minute. Now, if we do the same for 37 degrees C, again, 15 grams per decimeter cubed, but this time over 14 minutes. So 15 divided by 14 is 1.07 grams per decimeter cubed per minute. And then it does ask us to work out a ratio. So we're going to do 60 degrees C, the value we have there, in respect to 37. So the ratio is this value up here to that value there. So it's 5.00 to 1.07, which is essentially 5 to 1. And then obviously we must write our answer where it asks for. So we just pop in five there because it's five to one and we've got a ratio of initial reaction rates at 60 degrees C to 37 degrees C is five to one. Then it asks us to explain the difference in the initial reaction rate at 60 degrees C versus 37 degrees C. So this is where our theory now comes in. And we know when we're talking about temperature, we're really talking about two things the amount of kinetic energy that the substrate molecules have and the enzyme molecules have, and that's going to affect how quickly the molecules move and therefore successfully collide or not. And then we might start to think about, is the enzyme being denatured or not? And how quickly is that enzyme going to be denatured? So if we just have a quick look at the graph again, the first question asks us to explain the difference in initial reaction rate, 60 versus 37 degrees C. And we know 60 degrees C has a much higher initial reaction rate. And the reason is higher temperatures, higher kinetic energy, the substrate and the enzyme move more quickly, more successful collisions. Now we have to write in our theory, more enzyme substrate complexes. If there's more ES complexes, we know there must be more product being produced more rapidly or over a short space of time. So the, the concentration product increases rapidly in the first few minutes for 60 degrees C versus 37. So if we have a quick look at the mark scheme, we're going to tick off the marks. So the substrate molecules and the enzymes, more kinetic energy at 60 degrees C compared to 37 degrees C. And it, it's important to put in that comparison. Molecules move faster, the substrates and the enzymes more successful collisions between the substrates and the active sites of the enzymes. So therefore more ES complexes. If there's more ES complexes, there's more product being produced over a shorter time at 60 degrees C. Now the mark points came in here, more kinetic energy, the molecules move faster, more successful collisions, more ES complexes form, and therefore more product over a shorter time. Now, the second question asks us to compare the reaction rates between 20 minutes and 40 minutes. So we can do that uh, at the two different temperatures. So if we look at 60 degrees C and the change in reaction rate, if there is any, between 20 and 40, what we actually notice is that the concentration of product is the same 20 minutes as it is at 40 minutes. So there's actually no change in reaction rate between these two time points for 60 degrees C. And we can see that on the graph by putting this blue arrow. However, if we do the same for 37 degrees C, we actually can draw that tangent, that straight line on the curve. We can see that the tangent or the straight line actually does increase between 20 and 40 minutes, 
which suggests that more product has been produced over these 20 minutes. So there is some reaction still occurring. So there must be some substrates still available in the reaction mixture. And also the enzymes must have not been affected by the temperature because they can still form ES complexes and therefore product. So more product is still being produced between 20 and 40 minutes at 37 degrees C, whereas that is not the case for 60. You can actually work out the reaction rate between 20 and 40 minutes by looking at the increase in product in grams per decimeter. At 20 minutes, up to 40 minutes for that straight line. And that would be over a 20 minute period and then divide by 20 you get per minute. So now we can actually look at the mark scheme. And it says explain the difference in the rates of reaction at 60 and 37 between 20 and 40 minutes. So this is the first part of our answer. So at 60 degrees C all the enzymes are fully denatured in the reaction mixture at 20 minutes. So we know 60 degrees C is way above the optimum temperature for that particular enzyme. We know all the enzymes in the reaction mixture are going to be fully denatured and that's because the higher temperatures not only do they have more kinetic energy and the enzymes move around more uh, more quickly but they start to vibrate at 60 degrees C. And that means these hydrogen bonds, which are some weak intermolecular forces that hold the tertiary shape of the enzyme in its place, they start to break. Now, if the hydrogen bonds break, it means that specific 3D shape of the enzyme starts to change. Now, if the 3D tertiary shape of the enzyme changes, the active site change changes shape also. And that means that the shape of the substrate is no longer complementary to the shape of the active site. And the substrate cannot fit in or bind to the active site of the enzyme. So there's no successful collisions and there's no ES complexes being formed because all these enzymes have changed shape, i.e. they've all been fully denatured. That means no product is going to be formed at 20 minutes at 60 degrees C. So we can see here. The 3D shape of the active site is altered. The active site shape is no longer complementary in shape to the shape of the substrate. No ES complexes can now form at 60 degrees C, so no more product is being formed. Therefore, the reaction rate stops sooner at 60 degrees C compared to 37 degrees C. Now, the second part of our answer, there's a lower product concentration at 60 degrees C, again, versus 37 degrees C. As substrate is still present in that enzyme substrate mixture at 60 degrees C. It's just that it cannot be converted to product because it can't bind with the active site of the enzymes because they've been fully denatured. However, at 37 degrees C, the active sites are exactly the same shape as they were to start with. We know once an enzyme has catalyzed its reaction, the product is released. The active site is free to be used again. More substrate binds successfully with the active site at 37 degrees C. ES complexes are formed and more product is then released over time. So let's have a look at the mark points here. One mark for talking about the 3D shape has been altered due to the vibrating of the enzyme and the breaking of the hydrogen bonds. The 3D shape of the active site is no longer complementary to the, the shape of the substrate, so no ES complexes and no product can now be formed. That's the second mark point. We can actually see from the graph and the data that the reaction stops sooner. So the reaction rate becomes zero much sooner at 60 degrees C than it would do at 37 degrees C, even though there is some substrate still present in the mixture. And the last mark was for talking about the actual product of the concentration, uh, sorry, the concentration of the product being lower at 60 degrees C um, because some substrate is still present and it's not being converted to product. Now it's important just to make a note here and just to think about this. If the optimum temperature was 37 degrees C and we conducted the experiment at say 40 degrees C, well that's above the optimum temperature. But that does not mean all the enzymes are fully denatured. It just means that they've started to become denatured at 40 degrees C. 
So there might still be some successful collisions, ES complexes and product being formed at 40 degrees C, although less of them compared to 37 degrees C, which is why the reaction rate is lower. If you fully denature all of the enzymes at 60 degrees C, they will not work and no product will be formed. Once an enzyme is fully denatured, it cannot be converted back to its original shape and the enzymes will never work again. So even if you added more and more substrate to that reaction mixture at 60 degrees C, after say 20 minutes, nothing, uh, no more product would be made and the reaction, or sorry, the concentration product would remain at that value in that tube.